Cause she doesn't think that girls can sing rock and roll Sing rock and roll songs But I don't think they got Bikini Kill Records in small town Wisconsin Record shops But that's where they need them now more than ever so If there's girls still growing up in this world to believe they can't sing rock and roll, I don't want to live in this world anymore. All right now. No, I don't want to live in this world anymore. I swear I'll run away from every home I ever have. So I'll build a new house in every town I pass. And maybe then I won't always feel lost in crap. When I was growing up, I was the smartest kid I knew. Well, maybe that was just because I didn't know that many kids. All I know is now I feel the opposite. Like if you don't want to work, then that becomes your job. There's a lot of explain to people that I know or the kids who come to shows that I just don't want to talk about the office 
throat hurts not like that throat hurt like i punched myself in the throat 
<coughs> yeah, I punched myself in the throat. Fucking pulling a wrench and slipped and, you know, fucking absolutely fucking wrapped myself right there. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Happy 4th of July shooting, everyone. Yeah, Aspen. Oh, fucking working under a under a cabinet, trying to pull on a wrench and you know. Rev, I hate when that happens. Giving myself a black eye like that. Yep. Yeah, so right here. Hurts. Oh, and I'm tired. Uh, it's official. My um, delayed phase sleep disorder has flipped. I've been waiting for it to flip for a while. It's been pushing. It's been pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, so sort of the way my uh, delayed, uh, delayed phase sleep disorder works for me is that my circadian rhythm keeps gaining like hours on the front end. <laughs> or I should say the back end, right? Like, um, okay, let's say you start going to bed around like midnight. Right? A couple days in, you'll be going to bed around 1.30, 2 o'clock. A few weeks, maybe 5, 6 a.m. Before you know it, it's noon. Before you're going to sleep. Right? It just keeps pushing forward and 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 pushing forward. And then one day it flips. So, like, when I was... My schedule recently has been perfect for the night shows, but has been absolute dog shit for this show. But this morning, it flipped, meaning I was, like, last night, I couldn't, like, stay awake. Um, and so, like, I sort of slept through a good chunk of the night, and at, like, 8.30 in the morning, I'm wide awake. And so I spent the day, like, uh, peaky, it's considered a disability. Welcome to delayed phase sleep disorder. Um, and so eventually it flips. And that's what today is. It's the flip day. So, like, theoretically in the future, this would be a perfect time for a fucking stream for me. But for today, it means I've been up for an ungodly amount of time. Oh. <clears throat> also, I think I need to stop smoking as much weed. It's a shame. I vote we just make days longer. I vote we just, like, cancel days. Cancel time. Uh, yeah, I see they're trying to like make this dude out to be like trans. Right, that's him right there, I think. They're trying to say like this is him. Look, I don't know at this point. All I know is I'm sick of being fucking right. Oh, Jesus. Fiscus. Oh. I'm sorry, Biden tweeted out, make no mistake, our best days still lie ahead. Fucking idiot. <clears throat> All clocks are bastards. Um... I don't know where to start, man. I don't know where to start. Yeah, start here. I'm sure there are. Let's start with a picture of Robin Williams and Christopher Reeve. Um, <laughs> thanks, Alana. Uh, for those who didn't know, um, um, Muslim, Muslim, um, in fact, I was Rasmus. In fact, I fucking was. You want to take that shit to the fucking curb? There's a record of me calling it the day of. Hmm. So go fuck yourself. Yeah, I actually did. 
Oh no, the meanie anarchists who won't criticize Islam because reasons I made up in my head. Yeah, in fact, I did. Of course. The fucking gay club shooting in Oslo. Of course it was some, uh, of course it was some Muslim. What'd you think it was going to be? Jesus Christ. Hey, did you hear Rasmus? A crazy white guy shot up a 4th of July parade. <gasps> did you know? I called it was also a crazy white guy before I, I saw the picture of, it, uh, of the person, too. Because guess what? It's America, and it's a 4th of July parade in one of the richest, whitest neighborhoods in the fucking nation. Of course it was a crazy white guy. Oh, no. Who would have guessed? Where'd you go, Rasmus? So talkative, but not now. God, I love those fucking idiots that think they're going to call someone out. Because oh, you wouldn't say that about Jews or Muslims, would you? You, you always say it's Christians. Christian victimhood complex. Christians, we're under attack. Fucking, I'm sick of this pseudo fucking wannabe Christian fucking authoritarian uh, autocrats. Swear to God, I'm sick of fucking American Christians. Jesus, you all, you, American Christians are the worst goddamn thing on the planet right now, it seems like. Fucking absolutely ridiculous. Sick of these fucking wannabes. Fuck it. We're I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Mm, really, how about those teachings of Christ? Are you following them recently? No, not much. Love thy neighbor as thy love thyself. Fucking these homosexuals need to be lined up on a wall and shot. Multiple, multiple people. Many fucking claiming that bullshit from the fucking religious right in this goddamn country. And when I say the religious right in this country, I mean Christians. Debating on whether I want to swim or just play video games. The fireworks are pretty uh, from the water, but I would have to risk my earbuds being near the water. What kind of earbuds, Crimson? <coughs> <coughs> my um, my AirPod Pros are fine. I've dropped my right one in the fucking tub a few times. <coughs> uh, this stuff only counts if your neighbors aren't Gentiles. Uh... I'm so tired. I just want. I just want to lay down. I want to lay down. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Hey, Puka. <sighs> oh yeah, this shit. Another one. Yeah, Rasmus. I, I a hundred percent can judge one person by the actions of all, especially when it's a repeat process. <clears throat> Maybe the first time you can't. Uh, the hundredth time, yeah, you definitely can. Christ. Yeah, God Punk. That's not weird at all. Um, do y'all see some of the fucking tap dancing defense? Um, tell me about it. Do y'all see some of the fucking tap dancing defense these fucking absolute retard right wingers are having to do? Because the first fucking case out of Roe v. Wade. It's a fucking 10 year old out of Ohio and been banging this fucking drums since last week. And now they're fucking tap dancing like the goddamn fucking piece of shits that they are. Holy fuck. Well, what's a 10 year old doing having sex? She was raped. 
Well, how do you know she was raped? I've seen this conversation. Well, how do you know she was raped? Can a 10 year old consent? What the fuck is wrong with these fucking, I swear to God, if I have to hear one more pedophile apologist on the fucking part of right wingers, all the while screaming groomer at random people, I swear to fucking God, this is ridiculous. Fucking the amount of people I've seen try and fucking throw a 10 year old under the bus. Jesus fuck. Sick of these goddamn assholes. Oh, yeah, 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 Dick. It's fucking, dude. Yeah, Dick. It's not even done for religious reasons. It's just done because I, I don't want his dick. I don't, I, I want his pee pee to look like his father's. I don't like the look of uncut ones. What if, what if it gets dirty? God. I swear to fuck, I hate this fucking cunt. I hate people. I hate people. I just fucking hate people. <laughs> <clears throat> dig dig that comment about she shouldn't be having sex was not a man i was not quoting a man yeah you think it's men oh yeah there's a fair amount of men the amount of wom women i've also seen defending this it's about parody uh and by parody i mean p-a-r-i-t-y meaning equality or equal not P-A-R-O-D-Y. Yeah, it's the, the, the quote about, well, what's she doing having sex anyway? That's a woman that said that. Yeah. I'm fucking... Yeah, I know, right, Red? Just fucking teach him how to wash it. <sighs> Some women are more pro-life than men. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, so I had to, so must you. Oh. <sighs> Who did I see make that argument recently, Zippy? Somebody made that argument recently. I the, the the I suffered through childbirth, so you have to as well. Somebody made that argument. I forget who made that argument. It was a woman. It was a woman. I'm just trying to remember who it was. I don't remember who it was. Fuck it. Uh yeah. <laughs> um, and then you know, the cops. The, the Ohio cops, I, Gord, honestly, I don't, I, it, I don't, I don't remember at this point. It's, it's just not there. Um, let's just say it was Abby Shapiro for shits and giggles. It may, it a hundred percent is probably a misattribution, but we're going to say it's Abby Shapiro just for shits and giggles. So let's go with it. Um, and so should we, should we mention, uh, was it Jay Walker, uh, Jalen Walker? Which, by the way, the fact that this dude's name is Jay Walker. <sighs> uh, for those of you who don't know, the black guy that the cop shot in the back 60 times. Yeah, oh yeah, they shot this dude. <laughs> I wish I could say it the way I want to say it. I wish I could say it the way I want to say it. <laughs> I get in so much trouble. <laughs> but there's 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 a thing. There's in my, there's a thing in my head that's like I can hear a voice and it's a voice from my past and I can hear what he would say. And I just can't say what he would say. <laughs> Holy shit, can I hear it in my head? It's screaming so loudly. I heard they handcuffed his dead corpse, but I haven't verified that yet. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know. I don't know either, but yeah. <laughs> God, fuck. I saw the video of the shooting. Holy fuck. Guy, <laughs> it was very scary. He was walking away from them menacingly. What about the poor cops? It is. It's standard protocol. Uh. Oh, I can't stop burping.
All right. <laughs> oh, and yeah, the cops who shot the guy 60 times, they're on leave. Oh. Uh... How many bystanders were killed as it was cops aiming? As far as I know, none. Yeah. Paid leave, baby. Yep. I mean, when when uh, the women showed up to the Supreme Court to protest, dude, they fucking, dude, they had snipers on the roofs. They had, they were surrounded, like, instantly by he uh, heavy guards, heavy, you know, heavily armed police presence. But yesterday, when a 100 Patriot Front neo-Nazis marched through the center of fucking Boston, basically, the police protected them. So, you know. If you're wondering whose side, which class traitor is, you know, which, which class the, the traitors are, uh, are, are, you know, traitoring on. <clears throat> Erasmus, police union. That's why. Land of the free, home of the brave. So brave, they handcuff a corpse. So brave, they stand by and let children die screaming while they do absolutely nothing. Um, some of them did. That's the water. Let's see. Ship. Hmm. Let's see if I can't find it. I had a video. Don't know. Um,. Did y'all see the, the ramifications? Oh, and hey there, sweet. I don't know if I said hey there, sweet. Y'all see the ramifications of the uh, the don't say gay bill in Florida? School board in Florida voted that if uh, an LGBT, uh, LGBTQ child is in a PE class or attending an overnight trip, all parents in the class sh uh, must receive a notification about it, warning the parents that there's a gay uh, uh, a queer child in PE or in uh, the overnight trip, treating us like sexual offenders at the age of like 12, 14, 16, it fucking name it. <coughs> so, yeah. It's Leon County, by the way, if you're wondering which county board authorized it. Oh, Rasmus, that's adorable. We're well past the fucking legal. Um, oh, well, if you think that's bad, um, Mississippi legislators are now openly discussing using dogs at airports to sniff women. Attempting to lead the state of Mississippi. Why? Because dogs can detect a pregnancy. They're looking to curb your right to travel now. Yeah, non-binary, I, I saw. Enjoy your wine. I mean, you know, feel free to expropriate some wine. Fireworks. Oh, we may just do some fucking. We may just do some gaming. We may just do some party gaming. I'm, I'm. Baby contraband. Yep. Yeah, well. Um, but. But good news. It's in the state of Tennessee right next door. It's legal to marry a child. Literally a child. But it's also illegal for that same child to seek a divorce until they uh, they turn twenty uh, until they turn eighteen. So in the state of Tennessee, you know, right next door, they um, you can marry a fourteen year old. That's no problem. But that fourteen year old can't divorce you until they're eighteen. So forced marriage on kids, yeah, for sure. 
Jesus. Roll Tide. Yeah, well, that's Tennessee, not Bama. But same difference. But yes. Yep. Um... Let's see. Oh, um, the Evalde police chief uh, resigned from the city council, by the way. <laughs> Dig, I thought that'd get your attention. For those of you who don't know, that's that's Lake Mead. Oh, Marcus, I'm sorry. That's rough. Marcus looks like Marcus has COVID, everyone. <laughs> uh, Caboose, you're not wrong. Oh, is that the, um... Yes, it is. We'll, we'll give this a watch. It's funny. At least I find it funny. What's happening is you're looking at a um, video of Karachi. Um, apparently, according to the mob um, that gathered there, one of the Samsung vendors apparently had a blasphemous Wi-Fi hotspot name. So the crowd started destroying everything around the, the sort of shopping area because of a perceived Haram Wi-Fi SSID. So anyway, back to the completely rational way of thought. Karachi, Pakistan. We don't know where Karachi is. Oh, 
Totally normal behavior. Totally normal behavior. For sure. And before the fucking whiny left fucking... I'd say the same thing if I saw the fucking idiot Christians out burning Dixie Chick CDs. Oh, wait, I did. No idea. No one knows. No one fucking knows. So, good luck with it. The locals even called the police. Uh, apparently the country's blasphemy law prevents disturbing a religious assembly, insulting religious beliefs, making derogatory marks against Islamic personages, life imprisonment for a willful desecration, um, in 86, they added a separate clause, uh, to punish blasphemy, recommended punishment was death or imprisonment for life. <clears throat> Quote, in Pakistan, even unfounded accusations can incite protests and mob violence against alleged perpetrators. Human rights critics have long argued that minorities are often the target of accusations. <clears throat> Yes, they are Puka. They absolutely are. Yep. Yeah, we'll have to care. Yep, perfectly reasonable to jail somebody for life for not believing in Santa Claus. Oh. <clears throat> Everything's haram. Look at Islam's one of those. It's like fucking uh, Orthodox Judaism. Everything's fucking forbidden. Thinking is forbidden. Fucking, I'm pretty sure thinking is haram. Fucking. Yeah. Oh. California is set to become first state to provide free health care to all low-income immigrants. <clears throat> Guaranteed free health care for all low-income immigrants living in the country, even illegally. Fits in the budget, apparently. It's going to get them up to about 99% health care coverage in the state of um, California. They won't be able to, Zoma. The way this, this fucking court is interpreting everything from a state's rights, originalist perspective, I'd be surprised. I mean, the, the Qurans can be recycled, right, Melissa Karam? We can do something with them. <clears throat> oh, I love this dude. I love this dude. We're, we're, we're going to watch this dude. I love this guy. Are you on your nut mine? I tell you what, Rasmus, Rasmus, are you rich? Are you rich? If you're rich, consider it. If you're not rich, what do you got of your fucking mind? Shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to curse. Oh, shit. 
It's not terrible, oh, Caboose. <clears throat> it's not terrible. Dude, I may have to call this stream. Oh, my throat hurts. Oh my gosh. I, I, I want to laugh, but I know it's going to hurt. I don't think Are it's going to hurt. <laughs> Are you taking my blood pressure? Yep. Awesome. Right on. Why am I talking? Holy cow, I am so high right now, Josh. Josh, are you still here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'm looking at you. Yeah, I am. Yep. I am so high right now. <laughs> His buddy was given ketamine by the uh, the uh, EMT. That's that dude is high as fuck on ketamine. Why they give him it? <clears throat> probably because he was in a large amount of pain. He was probably agitated and in pain, so they dosed him. I know, right, Dig? Dude, I want to make a friend with an EMT. Get some medical grade ketamine up in this bitch. <clears throat> yeah, it'd be nice. Oh god, did you guys see the trophy hunter who got shot by the locals? It's fucking hilarious. I don't remember the guy's name. I don't really give a shit. Um, yes, Rasmus. Basically, um, you can go to the ER, but um, yeah, I'd um, yes, basically you are fucked, Rasmus. <laughs> um, yeah, fucking some notorious. Big game trophy hunter got fucking capped by locals. Mm. I love this guy. This guy, this guy's fucking somebody called it like apparently has his brother or something like that. Forgive the underlining and shit. It's posted, by the way, it's posted last year. It's posted last year. This is what you're up against, though, by the way. <clears throat> nice, Marcus. Nice. Yeah, Puka. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway. Yeah, has fam on the loose. It was Zippy who said that. Fuck it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hmm. So good to know menstrual cycles can be controlled. Just turn it off before coming in to work. Hmm. I kind of want to watch that documentary. It's 30 minutes. Oh. Oh, God. I mean, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. So, Diablo Immortal. 49 million dollars in its first month. 10 million downloads this game has. It is, uh, Grizzly. It is. Uh, yeah. And, by the way, 49 million dollars in Diablo Immortal is almost 90 maxed out characters but apparently what's happened is they've expand they've added like slot expansions to the game so now it can take over a million dollars to fully level a character pot uh, potentially so prior to the like character change um yeah the, the $49 million that D Blizzard has made thus far would amount to almost 90 maxed out characters. Zoma, Jesus, fuck. Uh, I mean, it's a garbage game. How do people not know that going in? It's a garbage game. Like, it's just... Jesus, I... Okay. Caboose, because people are fucking retarded. And on that note, I'm not going to be sober. I refuse. Yes, Rev, I saw Ted Cruz say he liked pay-to-win mechanics because, of course, he does. He's Ted Cruz. He's a piece of shit. Because Of course, Ted Cruz likes pay-to-win mechanics. He's Ted Cruz. Fucking, doesn't he have, like, someone to serial kill or something? <clears throat> Uh, 
Oh no, it's worse than a Bethesda ba- game. Not my area. It's 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 legitimately worse. Isn't he in Cancun? Oh, Jesus, fuck! All right, I want to watch a. Di- uh, I want to watch a, a, a documentary on Mike Rowe. God, I wish I was given ketamine by EMS. Um, it's just gambling. Uh, the whole idea of addiction. It's the whole idea that Blizzard didn't hire so many addiction specialists because they wanted to help their own employees. A lot of it's true. Yeah, caboose. Um, we did not receive the miracle. Oh, yeah, he's a total douchebag. I, I miss his voice. I love this dude's voice. I love Mike Rowe's voice. Hey, Aka. But yeah, he's a total douchebag. <clears throat> you don't, generally don't, Beast. You just generally don't. Prayed for. I was extremely confused by a customer's tattoos last night. They had a rebel flag, an American flag, and a need <laughs> Okay, one, Dak. They weren't white. They had the native pride tattoo, so I'm sure they were like one uh, 280th, you know, Cherokee princess or something. For sure. For sure. Um, so that's just one. Dak, don't don't judge a book by its color. Uh, color. <laughs> he is sweet. He, he legitimately is. Um, and I know he's admitted, um, before his, uh, liberal arts degree. I remember the the fucking interview. He, he said like in an interview one time, how his liberal arts degree served him really, 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 really well. Or some shit like that. Like he really emphasized it like that. He, and then he goes on and talks shit about like college degrees and liberal arts colleges and stuff like that. He's a complete two faced, duplicitous, hypocritical son of a bitch for sure. He's, he's. He's these typical right-wing grifter types. He's an actor who couldn't make it in Hollywood. Right? So he did reality TV <laughs> and then fucking starts the right-wing grift. Oh, Puka agreed. I watch I've seen every episode of Dirty Jobs like the apparently they're doing it again, but I've seen um I've seen all the old episodes multiple times. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it really is a shame. The glorification of fucking, you know, just doing a job, you know, a, a dirty job that needs doing. I, I was, man, yeah. I used the liberal arts degree to learn how to buy a lie effectively. Um, we have accounted for four miners that have been unaccounted for. We have a total of 29 brave miners uh, who are were, were recovering at this time. Uh, we had been s- spending time with the family, as you can tell. It, it's a very difficult time. <laughs> very strong people, very loving and good people, but very, very hard, hard times. Families are, I guess, have closure, but it's pain still there. It won't go away. Safety first is the stuff of idiocy. It allows us to begin to believe that somebody other than us might care more about our well-being than we do. And the minute we buy into that nonsense, then we embrace the warm grip of complacency. So, no, (gasps) safety is not the enemy. But if you make it the priority, then let's just wrap ourselves in bubble pack and drive at speeds approaching five miles an hour and never assume anything that could ever be confused with risk. When you work for for coal companies like this, you don't have no right. They tell you either do it or you're fired. (laughs) 
Zippy. I love how you judge that 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 situation, Zippy. Zippy just looks at Tucker and goes, "Ew, Tucker's smiling." That's that's all Zippy needed. Tucker Carlson is smiling. Something is afoot. You don't you don't have no rights when you when you're with the uh, company you know, it's non-union. Your voice don't mean nothing. You can't say no. If you say no, they say hit the road. If you can put yourself in the chair of the person considering hiring you yeah. and say to them Marcus, I would exactly what you would want to hear if you were them. Hi, it's great to be here. Here's the deal. Uh, I will be early every day. I will stay late every day. I will ask you what I can do every day to make your life simpler. If there's a difficult task, I will volunteer to do it. I will do so cheerfully. Oh, man, all I think about is money. I'm going to say it this way. What the mine inspectors and staff, they get paid off. See, they, I don't that. They just do what they tell them to do. What comes before safety? What are the two things? You get to fill in the blanks. Yeah. Personally, I would put uh, money mm -hmm. and um, I guess just getting the job done. Some of the violations that he gets by with just unreal. Some things I've seen is unreal. Some of the conditions he puts his men in is just unbelievable. You just have to be there to even know what some of these men go through every day just to make a living. I've seen mine inspectors write him up before and he just gets by with it. And he made a comment, supposedly, that, that it's cheaper for him to pay the violations than fix the problem. The cost that comes along with, ex with, with letting somebody else assume responsibility for your safety, mm -hmm. the cost is incalculable. I've got punk, so would I. And Viscous, 100%. Okay, for sure. The, the insurance issues, the regulation, I mean, it's on and on and on. I mean, and these mines around here, they're dangerous. And these men have to go in there and make a living. And I'll tell you what, the grief around here is just overwhelming. And you can feel it everywhere you go. There are a lot of people who really and truly, truly believe the system is rigged. And they truly believe opportunity is dead. Uh, that's a, they scare me. Um, not because I'm frightened of them, but because that belief is, uh, that, that'll kill us. Most people probably don't think about Mike Rowe, but since the end of his show Dirty Jobs in 2012, he started a foundation, testified before Congress multiple times, and made regular appearances on both the conservative corporate and boring corporate ends of the talking head circuit. In that time, he has remained remarkably consistent in his messaging. There is a skill gap in America. He usually accompanies this with a Joe McCarthy-style recitation of employment numbers. 5.6 million jobs. There are 7 million jobs available yeah. right now. There were 2.3 million jobs, according to the feds, that existed at that point in time. College ain't for everyone. Um, we have 75% uh, of those jobs that don't require a four-year degree. And yet, we're still pushing the four-year degree as the best path for the most people. Be subservient to your employers. Don't complain ever. It's not just about determination and Sweet. persistence and discipline. Sweet. Jesus. It's not just about holding your nose and getting through it or sucking it up or, or never quitting. It's also about finding a way to genuinely enjoy the task at hand. I believe the most annoying sounds in the world are whining and complaining. I'll never make them. And if I am unhappy in my work, I'll either find a new job. Isn't, isn't by definition, <coughs> isn't this a complaint? job or I'll find a way to be happy. Don't expect anyone else to watch out for your safety. No, That's I love this man's voice. I love this man's voice. I love this man's voice. Your employers to don't have to get it for. twisted. I love listening to micro talk, but holy shit, he's a douchebag. What if OSHA got it wrong? I mean, I this is heresy what I'm about to say, but what if what if it's really safety third, right? He has codified this pro-billionaire, pro-entrepreneur, faux working class moral philosophy into what he calls the Sweat Pledge, a set of ideas that you have to agree to if you want access to a comically small amount of money. They're not big allotments, you know, it could be anywhere between two and 15 grand, depending on the, on, on the applicant. Which can only be used towards certain vocational training programs, which Mike Rowe himself has assented to. In this video, I want to go over where Mike Rowe gets his bad ideas from, some of his worst ideas and why they're so wrong some other stuff he's wrong about, and maybe, if we have time left over, some footage of puppies. It's, 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 it's so much more in interesting to understand 
why you believe what you believe than it is to hear about what you believe. The first thing you need to know about Mike Rowe is that the man who said this... <coughs> Never follow your passion, but always bring it with you. ...is terrible at taking his own advice. He's an actor, a job that you only ever get by following your passion instead of being practical. And even though he rails against four-year colleges, he'll be the first to admit that... My liberal arts degree served me really, 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 really well. He likes to square... He crossed the WGA picket line. I didn't know that. This hypocrisy... Also, I wanted you to see this. Great, great hosting there, Mike. Okay, there's 12 pledge videos that you have to fucking... I can't wait to read number 12. It's not... This is... It only goes to 11. <laughs> it only goes to 11, it I know. It only goes to 11. You know what I was thinking? What? It's very long. There's like 12, 12 minute videos for each of these stupid pledges. <sighs> Look at this. Pledge one. I believe that I've won the greatest lottery of all time. I am alive. I walk the earth. I live in America above all things. I am grateful. I pledge that I am entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Nothing more. I also understand that happiness and the pursuit of happiness are not the same thing. Oh, fuck that, Gord. Thanks for that. <clears throat> I believe there is no such thing as a bad job. I believe that all jobs are opportunities. And it's up to me to make the most of them. I do not follow my passion. I bring it with me. I believe that any job can be done with passion and enthusiasm. This is the first website we send the AI robots to. <laughs> I deplore debt and I do all that I can to avoid it. I would rather live in a tent and eat beans than borrow money for a pe to pay for a lifestyle I can't afford. I believe that my safety is my responsibility. I believe that being in compliance does not necessarily mean I'm out of danger. I believe the best way to distinguish myself at work is to show up early, stay late, and cheerfully volunteer for every crappy task there is. Mm. You will distinguish yourself. I wouldn't notice that kind of boot licking. I believe the most annoying sounds in the world are whining and complaining. I will never make them. If I'm unhappy in my work, I will either find a new job or find a way to be happy. Mm. So, like, this is like anti-First Amendment. I thought you were happy to be American. I believe that my education is my responsibility and absolutely critical to my success. <laughs> I'm resolved to learn as much as I can from whatever source is available to me. I will never stop learning and understand that library cards are free. <sighs> I believe that I am a product of my choices, not my circumstances. I will never blame anyone for my shortcomings or the challenges I face, and I will never accept the credit for something I didn't do. Mm, I bet he likes Elon Musk, though. I understand the world is not fair, and I'm okay with that. I do not resent the su success of others. I believe that all people are created equal. <clears throat> I also believe that all people make choices. Some choose to be lazy. Some choose to sleep in. I choose to work my butt off. So that's the sweat pledge, everyone. In the same hey. way that John... Hey, Bobby. Hey, Cricks. John Wayne squared being a draft dodger. Really well. He likes to square this up to admit that... My liberal arts degree served me really, 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 really well. He likes to See? square this hypocrisy... See? I remember that interview. I remember him copping to it. Me. Even though he rails against four-year colleges, he'll be the first to admit that my liberal arts degree served me really, 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 really well. He likes to square this hypocrisy in the same way that John Wayne squared being <clears throat> a draft dodger by massively overcompensating. So we make a bigger fire. 
you know, come back with a bigger carcass. Right. You know, involved. feed the girl. Build a bigger train house. Kiss, bigger house. He claims that while he worshipped his blue-collar grandfather as a child and wanted to grow up to be just like him, he just didn't quite have the knack for filthy plebeian work and was forced to resign himself to being <coughs> a multi-millionaire pitch man instead. People who see dirty jobs figure I'm like Bob Vila or like right. Joe Handy. I'm not. That's a... Uh, that's a recessive gene. Sure. Right? And, and my grandfather, who got it in spades, was sort of uh, an, an idol of mine growing up. So I very much wanted to do what he could do, which essentially was build a house without a blueprint. Right. right? Ooh, that's impressive. Well, he, he only went to the seventh grade. And I just always assumed that's what I would do. And I, and I just didn't get the gene. And then when I got so frustrated that I couldn't do it, <laughs> it, it was my pop who said, you know what? You can be a tradesman if you want. You just need a different toolbox. So mm. that's when I, I enrolled at a community college after high school, and I started studying things I had no interest in. Maybe he should have tried following his own advice then. After all, it's not like his grandfather had any real training, so it shouldn't matter whether or not Mike <laughs> had the knack for the work from yes, day one. There is no hope without education. You have to have some sort of useful I know, right, skill. Public. No. Well, either way, Mike Rowe has tragically endured the rigors of getting edumacated and will now and forever be a little bit pretentious. I still hosted shows, but I did it through a kind of, uh, the Greeks would call it a peripatia. Marcus, and, and Marcus, stop with pointing out logic <sighs> and rationale. Say, you know, the, uh, you the greatest threat to, to freedom was total anarchy. The second greatest threat was total efficiency. What other peripatetic misconceptions might I be able to comment upon? I like the idea of the uh, the classic freelancer. I always have. But you know where the word came from, by the way? Uh, tell me. I'm going to, Nick. He's also stuck living in San Francisco for some reason, even though all of the people with his reported $35 million are supposedly fleeing in some kind of mass exodus. The wealthiest people will just say, I'm not working anymore. I live in California. I just read a report that said the, uh, the exodus this year as a result of a 13.5% state tax and some other tweaks to the system is unlike anything they've ever seen before. A claim which has been repeatedly debunked, by the way. Thankfully, Roe is at least able to keep a modest apartment with a view of Alcatraz, which likely only runs him a minor pittance and rent every Jesus Christ. Uh, I'll assume he's in one of the cheaper apartments. And all and rent every Jesus Holy shit. That's some rent. Jesus Christ! Uh, I'll assume he's in one of the cheaper apartments, and also somehow doesn't own multiple properties even though he's rich. It does sometimes seem as if pretty much the only thing Micro has ever successfully manufactured is a false public persona. The question is, why? To hear him tell it, it's because he's always had a respect for people who do dirty jobs, Sweet. although I do find it interesting that he rarely admits to the distinction between people who do those jobs because they're poor and people who do them because they're, like Roe himself, filthy stinking rich. People think dirty jobs was a love letter to blue collar work. It was actually a love letter to entrepreneurship. Great. 40 of the people we featured on there of the 300 were multimillionaires. Nobody knew it. In fact, just scrolling down a list of Dirty Jobs episodes reveals some major disparities in things like level of education and likelihood of business ownership. It seems almost like he's trying to purposely squash out class consciousness, but again, why? Hey, uh, totally unrelated, but let's take a gander at the donations page for his foundation. Huh. Well, that's alarming. The skills gap has nothing to do with unemployment, not really. The, the skills gap proves that opportunity alone isn't enough to get people un unemployed. Yes, right, right? Coin. And, and yes. really neither is training. You can have all the opportunity and all the is... training in the world, but if you don't have an underlying appreciation for the work, if you're not talking about jobs that people affirmatively aspire to, you're going to be pushing the the boulder up the hill. No, there is no skills gap. This is a fabrication on the level of a conspiracy theory and Rowe's increasingly bizarre and hypocritical justifications for why this supposed skills gap exists do a good job of proving that he doesn't have anyone else's best interests in mind. But before we get to his insultingly low opinion of American workers, let's utterly destroy his skills gap conspiracy. The shifting numbers are a misinterpretation of data coming from the Bureau of Labor Statistics monthly survey, the Jolts Report. On any given month, you'll likely find about 5 million to 6 million reported 
job openings lining up with Rowe's figures, but these openings aren't just sitting there unclaimed. In November 2017, for example, roughly 3 million are from workers quitting and another roughly 2 million are from layoffs or firing. There are also some retirements in there. This means that there are fewer than a million unaccounted for, which might be new jobs. This actually shows some healthy movement in the jobs market. Most of the openings are from workers quitting, which means that they likely already have opportunities lined up elsewhere. More separations actually occur during a better economy, whereas people hoard their jobs during recessions. Oh, yeah, but here's oh, the God. real final nail in the coffin for Mike Rowe's <laughs> shady sales pitch, which I'll That's quote it's... directly from the NAC. Two trailer. years. Nevertheless, if all these openings, whether they result from separations or from the creation of new positions, went and filled, then that would present a serious Why, problem for the economy. Why, yourself. This is However, awful. However, the same BLS job opening report also provides the count of new hires made each month. For November 2017, he's narrating on his own video. Why don't you narrate this? Boy, five million this is workers. awful. This leaves approximately 400,000 job openings that went unfilled during November, which represents 0.2% of the U.S. labor market. It is important to note that the November 16th month is relative to fill. Speaking of degrees, oh Roe is obviously God. correct in saying that the price of a four-year degree is going up, although he gets the actual rate hilariously wrong. The cost of a degree, and this I do know because I've read it in several reputable sources, uh, has increased at over 500 times the rate of inflation since the mid-80s. 500 times the rate of inflation. Nothing else comes close, not even health care. Yeah, in reality, it's about twice the rate of inflation, although I've seen different numbers, not 500 times the rate of inflation. Comedically, he seems to have confused the separate college inflation rate quoted in this Forbes article with an increase in comparison to the consumer inflation rate and also doesn't understand the difference between a 500% increase and an increase of 500 that times, sweet. which is just stunningly wrong. But okay, bad math aside, Roe has identified a real problem here and I respect that. His solutions though are totally ineffective. For one thing, the job openings rate on the kind of employment that Roe is trying to bolster is is low enough that getting educated for it is simply not your best bet. And a lot of these jobs do require education, because despite saying both this... I'm not saying that what you ought to do is go to high school and then go straight to work. And this... You know, I talked to a kid the other day uh, up in Butler, North Dakota. So it's Butler, right? It's cold, but he works on heavy equipment up there. And um, over 100 bucks an hour, work when he wants, paid for his house in cash, raising a family. You know, is it better right now today to have 140000 in debt but a degree from Georgetown in law? Or is it better to be that kid I described up in Butler? Roe is somehow wrong about both. Being a welder is definitely a job that you need a real education for in most instances. And there are low-skill jobs available right out of high school, like construction and retail. They suck, and you should leave them as quickly as possible if you get trapped in them, but they are available without going to a trade school. This is the dichotomy that most people people understand implicitly and which Roe is pretending doesn't exist. Bad jobs for people without educations and good jobs for people with them. The numbers bear out in that direction, with even the availability of work increasing with higher degrees of educational attainment. Look, I want to be clear about something here. There's nothing disrespectful about taking on a dirty job. Somebody does have to do it. But one, a lot of service and retail jobs, which Roe doesn't care to talk about, are also dirty jobs. And two, people are more complex than this. You can get a job right out of high school, then go to a trade school, and then later get a bachelor's or master's degree. If Mike Rowe really believed in what he was saying, if he was really out there to help people, then he'd be for free college for all. Oh, wait. So 60, 70 grand a person, that's a personal tragedy. But add it up, it's 1.6 trillion right now. And we hold the note on that. Yeah. You know, well, maybe not up there in Canada, but you know, down here. Oh no, it's worse up there. It's basically education's free up there, but you're paying for it as a taxpayer. How's it free? No, nothing is free. Exactly. Well, good news, Mike, because actually, free college would be cheaper than paying for our current system. Partially because private schools, which quite a lot of vocational schools are, are a major drain on society. Not only do private school students tend to have more debt, but they cost the taxpayers more. Meanwhile, they suck. In fact, it turns out that at least one of the Trump administration's accredited private universities was just a big old scam and doesn't even serve any students. Nothing's free except for conning money out of the average American's pocket. Right, Mike? By the
the way, since we're chatting, Michael Roseth, do you remember that one time that you called Bernie Sanders a knucklehead for pointing out that college helps keep people out of prison? Well, as it turns out, you are the finger-jointed cranium haver. Man, it'd be really nice if you could do even the most basic amount of research. It just really feels like you're not bringing your passion with you on this grift of yours, you know? By the way, I remember that not long ago there was an issue in the state of California in which the online college was being rolled out amidst multiple complaints, one of which was that at an actual physical campus, services could be provided which were unavailable elsewhere. For example, homeless students, real human beings that Mike Rowe doesn't seem to care about, could sleep in their vehicles at an actual campus. There's even a bill being worked on, AB 302, to write this ability into law. I thought about that story while doing research for this video, because as it turns out, in 2017, the president of a Vaterot College location was fired for allowing a homeless student shelter in negative four degrees Fahrenheit. Vaterot was a Midwestern chain of private trade schools. I say was because they lost their accreditation and shut down in 2018 after numerous scandals including lying about the transferability of credits and providing false documents to illegally steal federal loan money from taxpayers. By coincidence, I happened to find a website that still lists Vaterot as an option. And under grants and scholarships? Hmm. I wonder if any of the work ethic scholarship recipients attended there. Well, to me, it's, it's either, it's, it's uncertainty. We used to look at uncertainty as this thing fun. that was similar to variety, right? It's like, yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen next. And so, you know, whether you're reading a book or watching a movie or taking a trip, not knowing what's around the corner used to be part of the fun of it. Now, it's stress-inducing and, 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 and heavy with potential right. trauma, right? So that, that's, I'm not a social anthropologist or a shrink, but that strikes me as something that's, that's really fundamental. We've, we've, we've arbitraged the fun Gorgeous. out of uncertainty. Right. Having to choose between paying your medical bills and paying for your children's school supplies is not a fun journey, Mike. I know that you're a millionaire because of the hard work of the Screen Actors Guild, that union you belong to, but the rest of us have been watching our wages stagnate and inflation go up for decades. But hey, thanks for insulting us, real Americans. Clearly, we're all just lazy jerks who need to really appreciate our bourgeoisie owner class. It's not just a skill gap. It's a will gap. My town can't die. Oh, My job can't go away. I had it and now it's gone. And so, time out. Party foul. Hey, wait a minute. That's not what you said on NBC. There you just pivoted like a hypocrite because you were more interested in enjoying the nauseating praise of your neoliberal compadres in capitalism. I was talking to a guy that runs a, a fast, pretty fast growing manufacturing. Uh, thing. And, he, and he had this to say to me about the whole exercise of job retraining and what it means for somebody in their 40s. Take a listen to this, Mike. If you've been out on this floor doing skilled or semi-skilled work and you're 40 years old, you don't want to go do a computer-based job. You want to make things. And so that's part of the problem. You can have thousands of really good training programs, but the training needs to be the vocational, and then there has to be the job opening. We always focus on job retraining, and it's always about computers. It's always about, uh, when there's skilled layers, it's always about engineering and different things. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But it's almost as if we're saying, no, those other jobs, they're, they're, they're going away, and it's okay that they go away. Well, some people want to want to touch things. People ask me all the time, you know, what's, a, what's the big takeaway from that show? You know, and, and there were many, but the for me, the thing I keep coming back to is the idea that as a group, there was a level of job satisfaction that uh, was undeniable and surprising. I think what you showed a certain way was that there's dignity that these people feel toward their jobs. Job is much more than just how you pay your bills and what you're doing for your family and what your kid can go to college. It's what you feel when you go to work every day. Yeah. You think they'll ever uh, ask him about statements like this? Hey Mike, can you combine with the White House at all? Because it seems like Ivanka has the same lines you have about learning a trade and learning a skill. Have you been in contact? Yeah, we have. And I'll tell you the bottom line for me. After 10 years of doing this, my foundation's modest. We've, we've raised about $5 million for work ethic scholarships. It's and it's true. There, we, we are aligned in a lot of ways. But look, you guys know it as well as anybody. If I put the red hat on, half the country isn't going to hear me. Nah. By the way, since I know you read Forbes, and since you only care about money, here are some statistics on what your attitude is costing us. But hey, like you say... Happiness is a, it's a, it's a terrific symptom. It's a, it's a terrible goal. 
this is probably the worst position that Mike Rowe has taken public. Oh, yeah, for which sure. Which is saying man. a lot. In 2010, yeah. the Upper Big Branch mine disaster claimed the lives of 29 people, none of whom advocates like Mike Rowe care about. The president he endorses has relaxed safety standards for mining to such a degree that Robert Cohen, a member of the Mine Safety and Health Panel who served under George W. Bush and Barack Obama, has called it illegal. Specifically, the Pocahontas Coal Company's Affinity Mine has been given a pass despite a pattern of violations. Which I'm sorry, there's a Pocahontas Coal Company? endanger okay. everyone there. In 2012, Gary okay. May pleaded guilty to conspiracy to defraud the government. Prosecutors made the argument that he had manipulated the mine ventilation system at Upper Big Branch to fool safety officials in a desire to put production and profits first. What comes before safety? What are the two things? You get to fill in the blanks. Yeah. Personally, I would put uh, money mm -hmm. and um, I guess it's getting the job done. Mm -hmm. Roe claims that he believes in a controversial idea called risk compensation. One day, I came across this study that concluded the most dangerous traffic intersections were those with signs that told pedestrians when to walk and when to wait. Intersections with no such signs were statistically safer because people were more likely to look both ways before crossing the street if there was no blinking sign to tell them when it was safe to do so. They call it a risk compensation. He references the shared spaces concept of traffic, which is both misrepresented by him and also totally inapplicable to the workplace. Roe wants you to believe that safety inspectors are useless, government-funded worry warts who do nothing better than scold people for not wearing the right equipment. Later that same week, another compliance officer, this one with the Department of Natural Resources, interrupted our shoot to insist that I put on a life jacket while installing a culvert and a runoff pond. Now the water in the pond was less than a foot deep. In reality, they perform a multitude of actions behind the scenes to make sure that people are kept safe even before they enter a workplace. By the way, just curious, why didn't Mike Rowe's filming crew have their own safety people since they knew they were going to be placed in dangerous situations? Better hope none of them uh, end up feeling litigious down the line, Mike. Zippy. Let's talk about those millionaires that Roe loves so much. Entrepreneurship is, at best, a shaky premise for a career. The Bureau of Labor Statistics indicates that among private sector businesses launched in 2013, fewer than half survived into this year. On the other hand, the average benefits of a four-year degree are obvious and substantial. According to a study by Business Insider, In every U.S. state, earnings for college graduates <sighs> With Mike Rowe doesn't like guidance counselors for some reason. Guidance counselors in high schools now, in many cases, are, are evaluated and comped based on their ability to help X number of students matriculate into a four-year school. That's the goal. I have found nothing to support his claims about them being paid for suggesting four-year colleges, and that doesn't appear to be how just any of this works. What I did find was evidence that guidance counselors help at-risk high school students with crushing everyday problems, and that those counselors are in short supply and probably don't need to be demonized on national fella. television by a laughably fake human cartoon version of a blue-collar fella. But you're not anti-college. Not at all. Yeah. So, so explain that. Okay, I'm so anti-debt. Okay. If I have to pay for part of your membership in either facility, 
then I might get a little exercised about your ultimate right. choice if you can't pay it back. That is not how taxes work, and you are not allowed to exercise that level of control over the lives of strangers. This clip sums up Rose's stinking classist attitude here pretty well. A lot of rich people that I write about are happier to give $10 million to a foundation than to give $5 million in taxes. That's kind of interesting. So they're, it's not entirely about keeping your money. A lot of them are giving away their money. So what's the difference? Why do they prefer philanthropy over taxation? And the reason has to do with credit and control. When you pay your taxes, you don't get credit. You're just complying with the law. There's no, you don't get a sticker. You don't get a poster. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor is not going to say your name in public. You don't get a handshake. You don't get a photograph. You just paid your taxes. Second of all, you don't get control. When you pay your taxes, you don't say, I want this to go to social insurance. I want this to go to the bus system. No, you just pay your taxes. When you do philanthropy, you get credit and control. Your name goes on the building. Everybody knows you did it. It helps your reputation. If your pharmaceutical company killed people, if your chemical company poisoned someone's river, it helps your reputation because that was bad and now you're doing something good. And part of why I wrote the book is in America today, we have forgotten the tool of the law. We have forgotten the tool of policy. We think that rich people and entrepreneurs are how you make change. And I challenge anyone to tell me which rich person or company has done more for old people in America than Social Security. Which rich person or company has done more for health care for poor people than Medicaid? Uh, which rich person or company has done more for women than suffrage? You know, which poor, uh, rich person or company has done more for African Americans than the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Tech Rights support, Act? don't forget we the money We actually know longer. how to change the world. It's when we act together through our shared democratic institutions. But we have been in the grips of this religion that tells us is the way you really make change is not together but alone. This next one is pretty fun and starts with Roe agreeing with an obvious mischaracterization from whoever this chucklehead is. Uh, President Obama, a couple, I guess it was a couple years ago when he talked about, you know, uh, well, it, it's, he's good to talk about a couple of things. You know, when during his stimulus, he talked about shovel-ready jobs. I mean, you know, everybody took that kind of literally that he was talking about, you know, uh, building new roads or repaving them. These were, these were physical labor jobs that didn't really materialize with the stimulus. Um, the first time I heard shovel-ready jobs as a, as a turn of phrase, I was, I was in a, a water tower in New York with the guys who replaced the, the, water wooden, right. the wooden water towers on top of, on top of skyscrapers. I know and, that episode. Um, you know, a it's guy good episode. Had, a, had a small TV and we were on a break and we were watching it. And uh, everybody just laughed at the expression, shovel-ready jobs. And there was one of the guys I was working yeah, with basically said, awesome. you know, the thing is about all that, um, he's gonna have a lot more success uh, selling so shovel-ready jobs to a country that still values the notion of picking up a shovel. As it turns out, the 2009 American Recovery and Reinvestment Act worked. It not only created millions of jobs, but it may have saved us from the disastrous Republican economic policies that got us into the Great Recession. All serious economists agree with this assessment, to the point that polling reveals that only two of the queried economists disagreed, one of whom is a proponent of failed austerity measures. Oh, Another Jesus. scam that only hurt the little. <laughs> By the way, since Roe thinks that Thanks, authenticity Rumble. is so important... You shouldn't pretend to be somebody you aren't, because... Look, in my business, authenticity is, authenticity is for sale everywhere, but especially in my business. You said it before, people can smell a fake. I think they can smell it in the boardroom just as easily as they can smell it in the sewer. I decided to take a closer look at what his foundation actually does. Apparently, he's teamed up with the After School All-Stars Project, a News Corp partner which landed in hot water when a sports program that one of its licensees promised failed to materialize, costing the city of San Ysidro a quarter of a million dollars. So that's not shady at all. It's like what we always say on Dirty Jobs, you know, just, j just because you're passionate about something, doesn't mean you can't suck at it. His other educational partner, Skills USA, is another org that takes funding from Charles Koch. And uh, a lot of truths 
uh, are More in coke money. Figures. for a lot of people. I could go on, honestly. There's this whole thing from his sweat pledge, by the way. Yeah, that's a slightly more cartoonified version of rich guy cosplaying as poor guy Mike Rowe, backslapping a black prisoner above a statement which implies that he shouldn't blame anyone else for his situation. That one gets even more gross when you look into it, since that guy was literally paid to sign off on that statement. It's part of Rowe's pledges, which are all weirdly judgmental nonsense, like... I believe I'm entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I also understand that happiness and the pursuit of happiness are not the same thing. I deplore debt. I do all I can to avoid it. I'd rather live in a tent and eat beans than borrow money to pay for a lifestyle I can't afford. I believe that all people are created equal. I also believe that all people make choices. Some choose to be lazy. Some choose to sleep in. I choose to work my butt off. Do you? Sweat stands for skill and work ethic aren't taboo. Well, Mike, I have my own pledge that I'm hoping the people watching this video are willing to make right now. It's called Shut Up. Stop helping unethical twits uphold <laughs> popularity. Maybe I'll even follow your model and sell $100 printouts of my pledge on my website. No, actually I won't because that's stupid and crass and I actually have some dignity. Oh, we were promised puppies. Before we, we were get to promised the puppies, puppies, though, let's see if there are any real solutions for the job market. One fantastic way to increase job growth is through spending on public transportation. So it. surely Mike Rowe's favorite candidate supports efforts to increase funding on... Now, now, huh? What a shocker. Another actually proven way to help with employment is through guaranteed public child care options, which Trump paid lip service to while, in reality, running one of his own grifts. All right, that's pretty much it for today, and I don't think we really need to get into Mike Rowe's thoughts on the minimum wage. Predictably, they are wrong. This has been a lot of information, and you've been very patient. I know that looking at a former QVC host's smug face for so long is tiring, so you know what? Here you go. You've earned it. Puppies! Puppies. Yeah, I wanted to watch that. One sec here. Well. Cool. <laughs> Coke money greater than Coke money. Uh, yeah, he is a tool. Um. God. Mike Rowe tells all, will he run for president? Uh, <laughs> uh, sure. Sure. I'm pretty sure I can't show this one on stream. Yeah, definitely can't show that on stream. <laughs> Never mind. I'd probably still take him over to Santis or Trump. Yeah, I probably would too. I'd probably, yeah, I, I mean, definitely over to Santis. Trump's a known entity and we could maybe deal with him. I don't know. Don't make me ask. The answer. Uh, please let Mike fund his own run for office. Yeah, right. Uh... So, there's that. Oh. Yeah, fucking, it's not a skill gap. It's a will gap. Ugh. <laughs> Thank you, Zippy. Um, if you accept donations, those are hands out. Live by your principles, Mike. Oh, God, the fucking um, coach guy. Um food stamps There we go. We are a capitalistic society. Okay. I go into business, I don't make it, I go bankrupt. They're not gonna 
Here, a capitalistic society. Okay, I go into business, I don't make it, I go bankrupt. They're not going to bail me out. I've been on food stamps and welfare. Anybody help me out? No. I've been on food stamps and welfare. Anyone help me out? No. I go bankrupt. They're not going to capital me out. I've been on food stamps and welfare. Anybody help me out? No. Uh, yeah, exactly, Caboose. <laughs> they, pff, Robo Dragon, thanks for the biddies. Uh, <clears throat> typical right wing brain rot. That's what Samson Wilder is. I'm pro debate, bros, the concept of release, but panels are fucking nonsense. There's several jerks, a big prop off the right wing lies. Um, uh, public, uh, often types is just, um, um, my, uh, my right booby hurts. It's actually. It, so, what would that be? It'd be the anterior view of the major pectoralis, uh, pectoralis major, anterior view. This is. Okay, so this would be humeral attachment. So, somewhere between the uh, thoracic. Uh, the thoracic fan and the humeral attachment. Yeah, right here, right here. Anyway, um, no, that's not a ligament right there, beast. Not at all. That's that's quite literally the the fan. Uh, that's the uh, humeral attachment of the pectoralis major that extends to the humerus. That's that's what controls and allows you to do this. No, this this this. The thing that makes your armpit ridge right there is actually the um, is pectoralis major coming off of the th uh, the. Uh, it's about to be cracking here in Portland. About what? Oh yeah, I've seen this before. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> Precious moments. Hope your day is full of them. Perhaps these little figurines would add a bit more preciousness to your day. Remember uh, how the Grinch stole Christmas? Those little Whoville kind of guys? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can hum a few bars. But don't these look like the, uh, those guys who hung out in, what was it, Whoville? Cindy Lou Who. Jesus, Karina. Like Smurfs, sort of. The precious moments. Don't they? From how the great... What were they called, Blair? Anybody remember that? Whoville. What were they called? Who, Hooters? Whovians. <laughs> who's it? The Who's? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. All right, I can't. I can't. You've never seen that before, public? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, feel free to use the link and watch the whole thing. Uh, Kaiser Roe v. Wade? Or just Portland being Portland? <laughs> Fair enough. That? Don't worry about that. That's nothing. Fair enough, Kaiser. Fair enough. Hey, y'all. The Israelis are the ones who shot the reporter. Who would have guessed? U.S. officials said that it was likely fired from an Israeli position. Shocking. Shocking. Given that everybody on the scene said so, all evidence pointed to it, and they have a history of doing this. Yes, yeah, so I, I can't, can't imagine 
can't absolutely imagine what's going on. Huh. Typical. Towns have sounds pretty anti-Semitic guy. <clears throat> yeah. Yep, definitely. Yep. Hashtag canceled. Yeah, <laughs> got bug. You dare question the passive voice, you son of a bitch. Oh, fucking A. Dude, that did that the Blizzard earning $49 million in Diablo Immortals first month still is fucking kicking around in my head. I can't get rid of that in my fucking head. Those fucking jackasses made $49 million by putting a fucking hey, slot machine on a fucking phone. Jesus fucking Christ. One month, $49 million in just pure microtransaction. Oh. Y'all want to see who won life? And if you're wondering, it's Switzerland. It's Switzerland. So you've got healthcare too. It's as close to perfection as I can imagine. <sighs> they lack freedom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the freedom to be shot while attending public school the freedom to have christo, uh, christo fascists encroaching upon your uh, your life every day uh, yeah. and one of the most participatory democracies on the planet yep they still some of them still have um, town hall meetings that's this is the thing I look forward to going back to Vermont eventually is the town hall meetings Vermont is the most direct democracy you can find in uh, in the U.S. They still, to this day, have town hall meetings. Oh, you go in and you literally hold up your hand. Do we want to do this? Eyes, nays. Let's do this. Oh. This, is this rate lacking freedom is going to mean they have more liberties in the U.S. I mean, that is what it means. Don't forget the right to work. They lack that one. I was going to say West Virginia, but the water looked too clean. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was literally um, Swiss Alp s ice and snow melt runoff. That was, dude, that's, that's pure, pure. That's pure, pure. <laughs> that's that's the shit. Um, how do you like the Black Hills? Black Hills are fine, but they're in fucking Dakota. So that's your fucking first problem right out of the gate. <laughs> Is that um, they're like the Black Hills are like South Dakota into Wyoming, right? So you got a lot of shitholes that you're gonna have to put up with. It's good land though. <sighs> Cause the propaganda war has already been won, John. <laughs> John Kentucky Blue. God bless. Fuck. <laughs> That's uh 
that's quite a, if your name is accurate to what, what your circumstance in life is, good luck to you. Uh, Oh, Marcus, you're um, definitely a city boy, Marcus. Definitely a city boy. You're an indoor cat. Oh. <laughs> it's not the wording that, 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 that is standing between you and getting that done, John. Oh. Yeah, I, I, thanks. I kind of put that together. Is is the <laughs> I mean, Lotta, right? What's the old Carlin line? They call it the American dream because you have to be asleep to believe it. Uh, yeah, I don't... I. I don't count on Kentucky to vote their way out of a wet paper bag, John. No offense to you personally, but Kentucky's one of those states that doesn't really provide the rest of the, the U.S. with um, too much hope. You know, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Con uh, Carolina, Alabama, Georgia, hell, even all up to it, Missouri, Louisiana, Texas, Florida. Yeah. Yeah, well, the tide has turned. <laughs> Kentucky doesn't even make good chicken anymore. Oh, tech support. Just because you don't like waking up from a drug stupor being raped. Some people, you know, you really need to remember the Mike Rowe sentiment about, you know, the worst sound is complaining. You really shouldn't. John, so you know, we're basically a bunch of anarchists here. Telling a room full of anarchists if we only vote harder if only we change the words, the public will vote harder and things will get better. I'm just going to tell you right now, you're going to get a, a lukewarm reception. Public. Fair enough. Public will vote harder. No, <laughs> you won't, liar. Uh, oh, God, I'm going to vote. So hard. Just a complete pounding. Complaining too much? Take some DMT. Uh, how did we won in 2007? Are you talking about Obama? Homie. Homie. Obama wasn't a, a win for what? Capitalist, corporate, mainstream, status quo interests? Oh, okay. I'm like, wait, what are we talking about? Because Jesus. Dude, homie, right to work is your, one of the smallest. Your health care is attached to your work, man. Your health care is attached to your work. Your right to life is attached to your fucking work, your job. I don't, I don't care how you lose it, why you lose it, right? They'll just make some shit up. They always have. Obama the war criminal? <laughs> uh, some of us thought so. Then he bombed Doctors Without Borders. I mean, were the Doctors Without Borders busy raping some kids? Jesus Christ. Some of the shit they've gotten up to in Africa. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. But then horrible people do horrible things. Uh, 
You need to get rid of senators entirely. You don't need... <laughs> Do you think the Democrats are not for sale or not corruptible? Like, I get it. The Republicans are a more existential threat at the moment. I understand that. But it's the system that created the circumstances that ma it even made this possible. You've got a ch sucking chest wound and you're like, quick, somebody give me a Band-Aid. Like, homie, you got a bigger problem than that now. You always did, but it's exacerbated at this point. Fucking, it's not the Democrats themselves, nor is it the Republicans themselves. You've got a systemic infection. The, the system has gone septic, man. Like, it, it's, it's full on sepsis. This has very little to do with party structure at this point. This has everything to do with economic and governmental structures. It's just easily taken advantage of. Hey, zero dollar bill. Thanks for the follow. Oh, yeah, Zippy. Yep, and only 15 more dollars to Chuck, uh, good old Chuck Schumer's fucking um, uh, um, Roe v. Wade fund will help win. Jesus. Both parties bought by rival gangs and corporations. It's just one party's got a, a, a contingent of um, Christo fascists attached to it. That's all. Hey, John, why don't you get on the air? Because I can guarantee I've done more organizing in my life than you have. Homie, I'm 40. I've been at this for a minute. No, it's not because we're not a fucking anarcho-communist direct democracy. We're a shitty country. We're a shitty country because we're a coercive, oppressive nation with domestic and foreign policies that are in uh, inhuman. We're a shitty country because uh, compared to the rest of the developed world, we rank last or near last in almost every metric at this point. And even the ones where we're in the middle of the pack for, it's sort of pathetic that we're in the middle of the pack for. The only thing we're good at is locking people up, fucking running a big ass fucking military and having inordinate amounts of preventable deaths on all fronts. We're a shitty country because we're a shitty country. Fancy third world, exactly, dollar. <laughs> Thanks, Bound Going. Fucking Jesus Christ. <laughs> we're a shithole because we're a shithole. Fucking, uh, fucking maternity, uh, the mor uh, maternal mortality rates in Texas are equal to su uh, some sub-Saharan African nations, for fuck's sake. We are dead last in so many metrics for the, uh, for the develop so-called developed world. Take that for what it's worth. But Jesus, fuck. Because we're not an anarcho-communist we're a shitty nation. No, we're a shitty nation because we're a shitty nation. Pay the fuck attention. How many fucking nations in this world do you think when parents send their kids to school, they worry about them coming home from the end of the day because some fucking maniac white dude, because you know it's going to be a maniac white dude, it's always a maniac white dude, is going to fucking absolutely snap because 4chan fed him some doofy ass shit and the next thing you know he's screaming about Jews and shooting up a pre-k or some nonsense then Alex Jones is gonna fucking hop on the fucking air and convince a couple of million morons on the internet that it didn't even occur and they were crisis actors and then he's gonna pitch him uh, mercury and lead contaminated brain pills from China fucking we're a shithole country because this is a goddamn shitty country that's why it's a shit why is it a shitty country
Beast, yeah, there was a tr there was a new what maniac white dude today. Yeah, my Fourth of July speech. God bless America. Uh, Rand Kai, best Kai. I often feel that too, Boom. I feel that way too, oftentimes. All right. Oh God, am I having to fucking talk to a shit lib? They're always the worst. God bless America. God damn America. It says it says in the Bible. Wow, our military is so big though. Thank you. Thank you, Kabus. Jesus. Uh mm. <laughs> drinking to the end of an empire. Cheers, everyone! Uh, death to American Rehabilitation First Peoples does tech support. Supposedly the 12th carry group was lost near the storm. Rumble. Oh, Rumble. God, I feel weird. I think I might be coming down with something. I sincerely think I might be coming down with something. I feel weird. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, God, Punk. 158 million people rise and rise and rise. Yeah, I mean, you know, exactly, unicorn. <laughs> State's an idol. Why are you worshiping it? Oh, Jesus. Did y'all drag this motherfucker? You're lucky you're in Nevada <laughs> because if you're, if you're pregnant, Kai, you can abort. Ah. Uh. What? Hold on one sec. Totokaka 3, am I just banned from here? I don't know. You can see your fucking chat in chat. You can see what you're typing in chat. You can see it on the screen. I, I don't I don't know how to convince you. It, here's me addressing you speculating whether you were banned in chat or not. So, like, I hope this convinces you. I, I can't do much beyond that. I swear to God, some days. Um, all right, John, you there? Hey, what's going on? Uh, I need you to count to five for me, please, and thank you so I can get an audio check in. One, two, three, four, five. Um... Uh, I guess because no one paid him any attention, so he's complaining now. I mean, whatever. Uh, fucking boom, you're not shadow banned yet. Um, it happens. Fucking get too obnoxious, it can happen. <sighs> Look, John, here's the long and short of it. Most of us don't actually believe in this system. I, I could classify and categorize and scale and scope a whole bunch of shit for you but the long and short of it is for a lot of us for a variety of reasons the truth of the matter is, is we think this system has sort of run its course for humanity and that there's better options on the table um and what what we're what we're facing now is just sort of the inevitability of the end stages of capitalist corruption and sort of a realization that you know the inherent corruptibility of our system allows for a level of manipulation and rigging of the system because it was designed that way from the beginning so draw the next five years out for me or the next 10 years 20 years out for me in a way that makes sense what am because i because i see an anarchist and i'm like what am I a fucking? What, are you what, gonna what, do? what, what am I a fucking? Really? What, am I Nostradamus up in this bitch? Are you gonna get? Are you gonna get somebody on fucking CNN, a uh, political scientist, and be like, draw the next ten years out for me? Right? You're gonna get laughed at for asking that question, for propos uh, propositioning that to start with. People are speculating left, right, and center as to how the midterms are gonna go, let alone ten years out. Do you want to set up any other false fucking uh, scenarios oh, for me? How how does it work? 
to where you are able to have a say in government but be an anarchist? How does it work? In the in the future, in in a perfect world, what happens? I'm not a fuck I'm not a utopian. Anarchists aren't utopians. We're anarchists. We're about horizontal, organizational, and distributed structures and a collapsing down of hierarchical power structures and a challenging of unequal and un, uh, inequitable power dynamics within a society and a replacement of them thereof. It's not a fucking monolithic uh, philosophy. It's a network of ideas, and we much prefer it that way. You're trying to paint anarchism into a corner that political science and anarchist history uh, and contemporary action don't agree with because, well, I guess you probably don't understand anarchism. I don't know exactly what your brand is at all. What is it? What is, what is, what is anarchism? Anarchism is against structure. (laughs) Jesus. No, it's not. Not by a long shot. It's one of the most organizational heavy ideologies that exist. But what is your problem with me exactly being like, hey, we should do a thing? Hey. I don't understand. Because history of this country, let alone uh, the history of humanity, proves out the other direction. Whether you're looking at the 1880s to 1920s um, f- f- class movements, whether you're looking at the civil rights movements, whether you're looking at suffrage, whether you're looking at Stonewall, action and change in this country didn't come from moderate white voters. It came from the fringes. It came from marginalized, oppressed groups who cry out no more. But in every case, how did that change happen? Violence and destruction. Usually private property damage. I'm not supposed to say that out loud. You asked the question, so I answered it. What do you think the Boston Tea Party was? It was a riot that involved private property destruction that inspired similar domestic terror acts up and down the eastern seaboard. But we can vote and we can get things. And they did vote and they did get things in the late 1930s. We can do that again. You know, all those things that came into be, like the um, Labor Relations uh, uh, Management Act in 1937, you know where that was coming from, right? It was coming from 40 years of anarchist, socialist, and communist action within this country. That's why you have a weekend. It's why you have labor oversight. It's why you have OSHA. It's why you have so any of the leave that you have is because of 40 years of direct action by leftists in this country and on a global scale. I'm here because I complain that you didn't say for less. So I don't think that that's like any kind of surprise. I mean, God. I recognize that it's the labor movement that had 10,000 deaths in a war against management, a, a real war. Yeah. Yeah. Starting all the way back there at Blair Mountain. You can see it on my wall behind me if you know, uh, if you know what's up and you can recognize some iconography. But the truth of the matter is, is that the white moderate shit lib position has done more to roll back or allow the rolling back within the last 50 years than probably any other position in this country. This is why Martin Luther King Jr. called that position out explicitly when he was in jail in Birmingham. Because the, he himself straight up said, I increasingly see less of a problem with the Klan member than I do the white moderate. Like, this is, this is where... I'm not a moderate. I mean, democratic socialist, negative seven, negative seven on the compass. But so, I don't know if your complaint's really with me. I'm not the moderate 
plus two plus two Democrat. You vote harder. That's for as far as we're concerned, that's the joke. There comes a time when you don't. All you have you to do is win a primary and defeat a boxer, defeat a. You, you, a you do real, You do realize how long this these moves were in the making, right? You do understand that it's going to take decades to undo them. Well, no. You have no, no idea long. the history of the diminutist movement in this country, nor the capturing of the federal judgeships, do you? Holy shit, man! This took this take, this I, movement they, started they, under Reagan. Years, it would take us. It, it would take us literally if we had seventy-two Democrats. It would take us literally a month, two months to put to add it to make it thirteen. Oh, Pookie. Oh. What happened when Bernie got close? What did the DNC do? You know your Democrats are captured right. by the capitalist class hey. interests in this nation, right? Yeah. And the capital class yeah. benefits directly from this divisionary tactics that are used. Like, if there was... You have to admit that the real reason why Bernie was sabotaged was because there were a lot of very, very powerful women that really wanted a woman president. They really, really wanted that. That's really what happened. Stepping aside, so much of that you openly admitted that the political organization of the Democrats was able to conspire and sabotage a candidate. There's our, there's, there's our entire argument right there, homie. <laughs> if agency capture happens, you can recapture an agency after it's been captured yeah here's the whole point you want to you want to control the nuke i want to dismantle the nuke but i don't see a plan oh it's because you don't understand anarchism at all you're looking for an anarchist state that's what you're looking for. You have no conceptualization of horizontal organizational structures and non-status structures. So in your brain, you can't see anarchist action. But right now, in about 130-odd countries, Food Not Bombs is feeding people all over the globe. We're, we're housing, homing, and feeding people as we speak. That's what anarchists do outside of your system. We like to poke at you guys and fucking make fun of you. But when Spain descended into civil war in, uh, in the mid 1900s, 50% of agricultural and industry produced in, uh, in Spain at the time was all done by anarchist communes, right? Like when, when you, when society decides to do what society does, anarchists just do what we do. That's why when an indigenous group is fighting for their land rights, you'll notice there's anarchists there. When women are fighting, you'll notice anarchists are there. When margin marginalized people are fighting a coercive and oppressive system, anarchists show up. That's just sort of our gig. But you're looking for anarchist action in spaces where we don't act because that system is fundamentally broken and we don't participate in it. The, we, take one, we take one day a year to vote and we see it as a fucking, you know, with down ticket voting is important to a lot of uh, local anarchists, but as far as federal powers go, we know that ship has sailed ages ago. Is the number of non-voting anarchists anywhere near enough to win a primary? Does it matter? Well, it does in general elections because margins are often. Yeah, see, I don't I've, know, I've already I've, votes in Pennsylvania. If I've already fifty thousand of you. I've already discounted. there? I've already discounted you the entirety of your bullshit system. We don't believe in it. All I count, all I care about, is whether the dude on the corner got his uh, got his meal tonight. You're obsessed with votes. I'm obsessed with making sure somebody doesn't starve to death. That's it. 
I'm about actual harm reduction in this world. Not playing a goofy game of childhood fucking make-believe. That is commendable. That is amazing, and so like, I, I love it. So anarchists, like, around these parts, we have a saying. Go make a fucking sandwich. <laughs> every every minute that you're out there fucking dropping Democratic flyers on somebody's door, or Republican, or Libertarian, it doesn't fucking matter. Every minute you're doing fucking nor- door knocking and shit like that, you could be doing some dumpster diving and some feeding. Right? Like there's like for every minute of action that people spend on that broken captured system is another minute that somebody else suffers and anarchists understand direct action. It's direct. It's, uh, it's hierarchical. It's a distributed organizational topology, meaning we get to interact. We get to do, we are the direct actor. We are the autonomous entity. So we can create dual power structures. We can create learning facilities. We can create street medics. We can create feeding organizations to make sure people don't go hungry. We can create housing cooperatives. We can fucking expropriate housing in the cases of fucking uh, like anal. Um, it's a UK operative group or the trans um, homeless group in Germany that recapture spaces, right? Like that's what we, we work outside the system. We create dual power structures because fundamentally, historically, the system that you're defend you're talking about like recapturing we don't want it to exist so we don't really want to recapture it the only recapturing we're looking to do is to use it in like a frank or uh gores he's a french socialist and like gorsy and methodology to further uh run the knife's edge and empower the people and dismantle the state i the, the only thing i want from the system is full unabashed health care that's all I want out of this system. Nothing short of healthcare for all, everything covered. After that, dude, just the anarchists and the socialists will take it from here. That's it. The late stage capitalism is ringing the, the last, it's, it's last call, man. It's last call. This shit can't go on this way. So, yeah, we just, we're of the opinion that feel free. We put, most of us put our votes in once a year. We're like, sure, sure. We'll do our harm reduction, but don't come knocking when it's organizing time and fundraising time. Anarchists and our ilk are more concerned with doing actual harm reduction in the world. And I do understand being offended by all the ad, all the submissions for, hey, give me money. I understand that. I think that's total bullshit, too. I mean, if you're Barbara Boxer, there's absolutely no reason why you should need a damn penny to win an election. I understand that. Um, Kat wanted to know, at what point would Jews and other minorities in Weimar, Germany, would, uh, would have been able to use violence to prevent the rise of Nazis and overthrow the active Nazi government? It's a good point. There was a tipping point, Right. There's a tipping point when, dude, people are standing by. People are not taking these. People are like, oh, well, you know, it's only one guy. It's two guys. It's five guys. Oh, Patriot Front's only 100 guys. Oh, well, Patriot Front's an expansion of the Vanguard one. And because Vanguard had to rebrand after the Charleston thing, Heather, uh, the Heather who got run over by the, that was Vanguard. And now they've rebranded and spun off new chapters and Patriot Front's marching in the fucking streets and shit. And there's U-Haul vans of fucking Patriot Front. You notice how this is getting worse and worse and worse? Like they, they've captured the Supreme Court. They've captured, I would argue, half of this country as far as the state level goes. Right? Like fascists really are making grounds. And the everybody's like from a certain segment, their solution is vote harder. And anarchists are sitting here going, that's not what you do with Nazis. <laughs> that's that's We, this dude, anti-fascism is World War II soldiers. World War II soldiers, your grandpappy that went, well, I mean, at least some of them. I know we have people that, you know, we have, we have some listeners in Germany, etc. Most of our grandpappies, (laughs) you know, fucking World War II soldiers. That's anti-fascist action, right? That's OG Antifa right there. 
You want to know what OG Antifa looks like? It looks like a good old boy from the deep south going over to fucking France uh, and cracking Nazi skulls, doming Nazis. Like, that's what it looks like. You don't have an ideological conversation with a fascist. That's not what you do. And I've done it plenty of times. There's no changing that position. And there's a tipping point in society when there's enough of them that you stop having the conversations. And I would argue we're starting to approach those numbers. There's the first fucking first trigger law that happens in Ohio. The very first case of the very first one that pops is a 10 year old rape victim. And I have to look online and see these fucking so-called white ethno nationalist, so-called Christians, right? Fucking talk about well, what was this 10 year old having sex for anyway? She was raped. You fucking morons. And now we got to fucking transport her across state lines so she can get a fucking an abortion so she doesn't a 10 year old doesn't have to attempt to carry her rape, rape baby to fucking full term because these idiots got the fucking Old Testament shoved all the way up their ass. What are you going to do? Have a conversation with that? <laughs> I mean, good luck, but I'm a I'm a I'm gonna hang back with the anarchists and black Bloc. <sighs> um, Kat wants to know, like, wh- where where is the line drawn for you, um, like, between violence and voting? Like, we have real historical examples. Weimar Germany. When should the Jews have stopped voting and started violenting? Public. That's true. Oh, God. I've also seen I didn't see rape. Maybe she should close her legs. Dear God. John? Oh, I'm sorry. That was a question for me. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was rhetorical because, no. I mean, like, where's the line? Where is the line when the Jews should have yeah, done because violent we, action we, on the we, Nazis? We have an analog. Or, or all, all the minority groups? Yeah, we have an analog, right? There's a rise of Christofascism in the United States today that has a very real potential of metastasizing and becoming a real theocratic threat, right? You have an analog in Weimar Germany where you have an existential threat to minorities, specifically in this instance, uh, the Jewish po- population. And there was a period where there was a semi-functioning system of governance, voting, etc., right? And then there was a period where there was a rise of the, uh, what would become the National Socialist Party. And then there was the, you know, the executions, uh, rounding ups and executions of the actual you know, syndicalists, the trade unionists, and then the socialists and that sort of thing. And it progressed to the point where, well, congratulations, now people are being rounded up. Where is that line for you? Where do you stop advocating vote harder and start advocating we got to put in some work now. Some work. As in, as in the feeding people. As in 14 year old Dutch girls luring uh, Nazi soldiers out of a bar with the promise of sex in the forest around the corner. And then a group of teenage girls slitting their throat when they walk into the trees. So you're advocating for that sort of thing to happen at a Nazi bar here in Michigan? Or Do you have something? Nazi bars in Michigan? Well, I don't, I, I've never seen a Nazi bar here in Kentucky. Okay, well, well I mean, I'm wondering if it's... Na- well, <sighs> while not Nazi, there would be an argument that there's probably plenty of bars in Kentucky that are definitely ethno-nationalist in nature. having lived in the deep South for an extended period myself. But we're talking about people that probably wouldn't even fly Confederate flags in most of them. I'm saying that given the course of human events and the historical record, we know that there is a balance between it's the tolerance paradox, John, it's the tolerance paradox. How long do you tolerate the intolerance? 
Where's your line? Because what we're saying as a community, basically, what the chat is saying, uh, if I may speak for them as a collective, it, what they're saying is that the line has been crossed. And they're try attempting to elucidate your line. When do you, like, rounding people up? Like, wh wh when do we, like, actually do something about this problem rather than just say vote harder? We're close to it, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, the anarchists are just saying we've been here for 100 plus years. That's all. The anarchists would say we've been here for hundreds of years, depending on what ethnic group, which diaspora you identify with, what ethnicity in whichever dominant, you know, uh, ethnic region you may live. Like that's literally the anarchist position is it's an analysis of power dynamics and an elimination or minimization of coercive and oppressive dynamics. That's what we're about. We're about a min maxing a system. And there's way too much inequity, way too much coercion, way too much oppression contained within this system. Just baked in. It's baked in from the ground but, up. But it doesn't change overnight. This system doesn't. You have to change. Oh, it doesn't change, change at all. It from within. No, it doesn't change at all. But you have to change it from within. Change doesn't come from within. It comes from without. Not for that system. If you want to change yourself, yeah, change comes from within. But that's not how that works. The system will inevitably corrupt you. That's what it will do. A few will hold on to their morals and ethics, but they will be in the vast minority. Most people have a, a, very, a very achievable price. You're up against something that uh, most people apparently can't conceive. If I walked up to you, I could, the numbers on the table for most politicians are numbers that most Americans can't conceive of. We're talking offers of your career is taken care of, your wife's taken care of, your kids are taken care of, your family's set, man. Like, you're going to have a good life now. Just play ball. Do you know how many people will just sign on that dotted line? Most of them. <laughs> Astral, a very low price, might I add. What's up, Chapa? Yeah, I know. What, what to a slave is the 4th of July? This country is foundationally corrupt. You know that, right? Like, it's, it's broken. We, we literally codified slavery into our fucking constitution. We, we, we have an unbroken string of anti-labor practices and uh, um, slave patrols in the form of our original metropolitan police forces all the way to today. There's never been a reformation of that system. Never. I do an entire fucking episode on this. Tell the entire history, the origins of and problems with modern policing. I follow it from its European origins and roots and follow it over to, uh, to North America. Like, we've never, never attempted to actually fix that. And it's foundational to this country. We codified slavery into our constitution. This whole fucking gimmick was for all men are created equal as long as you are a white Landowning, heterosexual, cisgendered male. Which cisgendered at the time is hilarious. Wigs and fucking makeup and shit. Oh. So, Kat wants to know, what, so are we talking like brown shirts uh, in the streets or concentration camps open in the 30s to handle Jewish immigration? Because we've already got the brown shirts. Well, what, what if they had been able to hang Mike Pence? I mean, uh, you really, you re John, you really want to know my answer? Whatever. Honestly, yeah, I don't want to know your answer to what if they had been able to hang Mike Pence? Whatever, yeah. whatever. It might have ushered on the balkanization of the U.S. faster. You know we're heading that direction, right? 
Like we're heading straight for balkanization. It depends. Honest, I think, I honest to God think the Democratic Party has written off like much of the United States. And by doing so, writing off the elections where they know they're going to lose by 30, it's not about just that particular election. It's about the long-term fight. And by giving up on red areas, you really are letting them go from 51 to 70, just like that. And it's, and it's, it is major mistake by the party. And it's being, it's being done by people that you're right. It's that part of the party, the, um, what do they call themselves? He wrote a book about it. Third way, the third way Democrats. Fuck them. I agree with that. Oh, I shouldn't curse on your stream. I'm sorry. Uh, you definitely should. This is marked as an 18 over mature community only Discord and fucking Twitch. No, you're fine, man. It caboose a lot. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, that got quite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the labor Democrats and the and, and the minority groups and everything. You put us all together, and we can beat off in large swaths of the country given an opportunity like we did in Kentucky for years and years and years. I mean, it's rural and all that stuff, but it was very democratic. Republicans that we had were from the fifth district and that fifth district was a coal mine. And, and those Republicans weren't, like the Republic Oak Brother Republicans we have now. I mean, here's 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 the problem with well, what a few people who have been alive for a couple of years would say. <clears throat> Mitch McConnell's been in office since nineteen eighty five. I mean Kentucky hasn't necessarily had its act together. For for a while. When, for example, we had a uh, Wallace Wilkinson was our governor and we went from being with Mississippi and West Virginia all the time. And I know that it is horrible to say, but we started to beat a bunch of other states. And instead of being last, we, we got up to 34th in education with strong democratic governance. And then what happened? There was a lot of elections where the Democratic Party, the National Democratic Party, let Mitch McConnell ride, let whoever ride, and didn't put up a good fight. Interesting. So what you're saying is large-scale centralized organizational structures have a tendency to be able to be manipulated, corrupted, and maybe maneuvered in a way that isn't necessarily beneficial to the people at the bottom. Seems like the in this particular case, your supposition fits. Wonder why I'm an anarchist. Ah, oh. let's see. Oh, different one, Beast. I know what you're talking about. Um, yes, uh, pound coin, that is true. Um, there's a difference between um, we need to play the game harder and the game is rigged, right? I live in Las Vegas. Hi. Um, it's quite the experience. It's quite a, it's a learning. It's a, definitely an education. Uh, to spend a couple of decades in Las Vegas. Um, at this point, I would compare this sort of like 
Roe v. Wade, vote harder sort of mentality, right? Um, to somebody who thinks that if they put enough money into the slot machine at the casino, that it's quote unquote due. This is the apt comparison to, for me. Is that you like it seems to have a fundamental misunderstanding of how, the rules of the game and not understanding that the system is literally rigged. It is, it's rigged. I mean, that's why the Senate exists. The Senate is there just to rig the system. The, electorals, uh, the Electoral College is there just to rig the system. The system was rigged from the inside on day one from construction. That was the whole point. Jeffrey, all politics is local. Jeffrey Young won Kentucky six primary. So, I mean, I don't understand. He, that, the game wasn't rigged for Jeffrey Young, I promise you. <laughs> Was he a senator? No, he's been a weirdo candidate. That's the point. For, for that, that's the time. point. The system is rigged at the key junctures of control and power. You can afford to let some grassroots local elections go to people who would rock the boat. That's no problem. As long as you have a Senate that can overrule the, uh, the will of the people, as long as you have electoral college that can watch their votes, as long as you have a rigged Supreme Court, you can control the mechanisms of constitutionality, right? Like, it, the system is literally rigged and controlled at all of the key junctures. All of these elements that we talk about, senators, so why? You're saying that they give up key junctures on purpose to... I'm saying they're not giving up anything. I'm saying that they are an entity that is sprung from those junctures. They, they're, they're, they are of them. <laughs> that's, that's the whole thing. They're bought and paid for, man. There's very few politicians that aren't bought and paid for. Grand scheme at the national level? Dude. Congressman will cost you 10 grand. That's, dude, lobbyists are absolutely on the prowl. Absolutely on the prowl. Like, this is just the way it is. This is just the reality of the situation. <laughs> it's really easy. How much, why, why do you, what's the, the, the foundation of the, the vote harder rhetoric, right? Is you just need to overcome the manipulations the Republicans are engaging in. Do you ever sit back and ask, like, what's the nature of these manipulations and why do these loopholes exist and why do these systems of control and parliamentary procedure exist at all? Because when you start investigating these qualities, you find out very quickly they're there because this system is put in place to put in check the will of the people. Yeah, like if we poof the Electoral College away alone, Republicans would be mega fucked. Yeah. Can't get sink home insurance. Oh, no, yeah. I should tell some stories about my time on K Street and how it pushed me out of D.C. altogether. Miss the food. Those is Marcus. Um, viscous. It's always going to be shit. I refuse to believe in a vanguard or a learned fucking men of science to rule us all. Viscous. Sorry, man. Uh, both parties are in class solidarity against the U.S. As opposed to the manipulations of the Dems, which the Libs had wave. Yeah. No, oh, it's, it's just we come at it from a different angle and we provide solutions differently. That's how anarchists feel about this, man. Like. We just were like, that thing's rigged, and I'd rather make sure that the homeless dude around the corner has a sandwich in his stomach because I'm not going to expend energy on the, on the part of Nancy Pelosi. Just the truth of the matter. Who's your representative? Uh, Nevada. Fucking, um, 
Oh, we got a few of them. Fucking, we're going to be, there we go. Uh, mine is, I think, oh, both of my senators are Jackie Rosen and Masto, but my, like, congressional district is, um, let's see, so I'd be three. Who's, uh, Susie Lee is my representative. But I don't have to worry about my state. My state's based as fuck. That's, I'm in a sweet spot, man. Fucking, we have, we're the, we're arguing, we're, we're the, we're, we're kicking around the top. We have bad education, but despite our bad education, we got everything else, man. We got legalized prostitution. We got legalized gambling. We got legalized cannabis. We got fucking uh, Medicare. We got one of the best Medicaid programs in the country. Our Medicaid can, covers gender affirming surgery and hormone treatments for trans people. Um, we have huge Medicaid program expansions. It's illegal to test for fu uh, for weed in pre employment tests here. Um, fucking like there's all sorts of just uh, fucking drive through marriages, online divorces. Um, fucking walk around with a bottle. Fucking don't worry about it. We are short on water, but you know, I'll ditch out before then. We have lots of water. Um, it's got a little lead in it. <laughs> the Christian's going to nuke Las Vegas. Papa John wouldn't be the first time this place got nuked. We'll be fine. A little more, a little extra background radiation. Do you stream? Am I allowed to tell Kentucky jokes? Um, yeah, uh, viscous. Yeah, yeah. North North Nevada has water. We'll just run a pipeline. We've talked about it before. Um, fucking John, do you stream? People are asking. Well, one person was asking. I'd be just. I don't know. I'm not that interested. Okay. So no shout out necessary. Um, <laughs> be stop stealing our water, you fuck. Uh, strontium builds strong bones. It's true. Um, <laughs> goddamn closeted corpse. Diane Feinstein's my senator, says Carpe. Yep. I don't understand that. If I was in California, I'd want to send somebody pretty radical to the Senate. It's almost like the Senate's a captured and controlled political entity. Dianne Feinstein, the Democratic senator from uh, California, oversees San Francisco, flew a Confederate flag in her city. Definitely a representative of her uh, of her people, though, for sure. Yeah. Why can't? Why doesn't she lose her primary then? Because primarying an incumbent senator is very difficult to do. The system's weighted. It's rigged, man. But if they're horrible enough and. That's a pretty horrible thing to do to fly a Confederate flag as a Democrat. Hated Feinstein since '78. Yep. Yeah. No, it, dude. It's Bay Area, fucking San Francisco. It's the Bay Area. It's full of shit libs and tech bros. In her defense, she was around before the Confederacy lost. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, Feinstein's completely gone senile. She's fucking, dude, that, uh, that funeral for her friend was hilariously bad. She got up and fucking, was supposed to give, the eul give a eulogy for her friend, gets up and just rambles for a few minutes, doesn't mention the friend at all, fucking sits down and the aides immediately rush forward and start like telling her like, um, eulogy. You know, for friend, she then gets up and talks about the friend. Um, she gets up again and talks about the friend in the present tense. Totally forgot the friend was dead. Yeah, she's she's gone. Oh, yeah, Viscous, 100% Minnesota's not giving that back. Yeah, that, that flag is their property at this point. I 
for your name, Magic Sky Wizard. Um, yes, Pound Coin. Yeah, trust me, we heard about it. Um, all right, two forty. Cool. Um, all right. Well, John, I'm gonna call it there. It's been lovely speaking with you. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, if you Thank have you. if you have questions, you can ask them on the Discord, man, or chat. Whatever. Stick around. All right, man. Catch you later. Um, okay, there we go. Okay. Um, uh, all right. Delete these. God damn it. All right. Okay, cool. Um, kind of want Magic Sky Wizard in the fucking Discord. I see you. Good name. Arguably one of the best. Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, Cat, of course you didn't. Um, I kind of want to take it over to... Yeah, you know what? Let's take it over to just chatting just for... Oh, I'm in just chatting. Holy shit. Hmm, who knew? Uh, what's your thoughts on Florida? Saw it off and give it to Israel. That or just wait for the oceans to take it back. You know, whatever. Florida's a problem. It is. Guess Florida. Florida. So wait eight years. <laughs> give it to Palestine. Well, no, see, Zippy, the idea is to give it to the Jews and move them out of Israel and just get rid of Israel. I'm attempting to get rid of the state of Israel by moving all the Jews to Florida. And then Palestine can have Palestine. You know. Uh, Crimson, you guys can sell it off after I leave. No, give it to the Palestinians and watch how quickly the locals learn about minority rule. <laughs> uh, yeah, fluoride? Nah, Florida. Um, <laughs> cupcake. I'd love to have Florida as a home for Jews. Um, <laughs> the heat, the rich people, I hate it all. Everything sucks. This viscous. Oh, viscous. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of Florida. Let's just put it that way. Um, Florida is one of the problematic states, but it's I, it, like all places in this country. It's the people that ruin it. I like Florida. Florida is a really interesting place. I Grandparents lived there for many years. I've spent plenty of time. I've spent time in the Keys. I've spent time in the mid-country. I fucking, uh, in mid-state. I... I I like Florida. I do. It's a nice place. It's an interesting place, but it's the people. <laughs> um, Florida's a problem, child. You have an African snail infestation in Pasco County. Now this is redneck. Jesus Christ. Oh, viscous. No, 100%. We should, dude, fucking Sherman should have finished the job, man. 100%. Yeah. Exactly. Dude, we fucked up. We fucked up restoration. Absolutely. John Wilkes Booth, Booth fucked up restoration. Uh, fucking Lincoln getting capped early in in the in Ford's Theater ended restoration. It did, didn't finish it. it we we should have... No. Yeah, yeah. Sherman should have finished that fucking job. 100%. Get the Christian apocalypse race out of Israel too to troll the Christian nationalists. That's a fun side effect. It is. Um, 
Ah, eh, well, reconstruction, whatever. Restoration, reconstruction, yeah. I did that entire fucking routine with McGee here, fucking high off my tit. Fucking, t um. <laughs> South should have been treated as a territory. Oh. It's Astral. I should have sub. Is it Bezos Bucks? Tell me it's Bezos Bucks. Ah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Bezos Bucks. I don't mind the Bezos Bucks. Um. Okay. Not yet. I expect you to knock the door in a moment to get drafted into the war, to be honest. Should have pushed him into the <laughs> Pacific Ocean. Kaiser. So uh, quite a push. Um, oh yeah, yeah, viscous for sure. For sure. I mean Um Magic Sky Wizard. <clears throat> so was Islam. Are they coming for me yet? <sighs> Tech support. <laughs> oh, fucking it. Yep, Abe. Beat you to it, Astro. Well, I mean, to be fair, Zippy. It, um. Oh, okay. Great. Rock on, Bobby. Let me know when you're here. <laughs> Cancel this fuck. I know, right? It's just, you know, call like I see it. Equal opportunity offender is what it is. Jesus Christ. Carpe. Pri oh, prime bucks. Bezos bucks. I love it. Fucking cost that fucker. I love costing him on this platform. That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, there we go. Is it an actual countdown? That's oh, a countdown. He can give himself a countdown. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you, public. Oh, Lincoln was it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, cool. Uh, redneck for sure. Um, Lincoln was um, the the letters between Abraham Lincoln and his bodyguard. Super gay, super gay. There it is. It popped up. Oh, cat! They've been going nonstop here, just nonstop. Night, me toad. Take care of yourself. Ah, I got punk. No worries. Buy erasure, buy erasure. <laughs> Fucking, he was gay. We're taking him. We're taking him. Oh, 94% to a level one. Didn't didn't quite get to level one. <clears throat> I proudly make sure to keep people awake by exploding things in the sky. One drop of cum roll. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, Carpe. Yeah, it's just been going all day here. Yeah, 100%. 100 fucking percent. Oh. Y'all uh, y'all see the new way Kai's going to hurt himself? <clears throat> it's my new fingerboard that's coming. <laughs> uh, what's my deal with? There it is. Zippy had to do it. Kai gonna break some fingers. Actually, uh, what's more likely is um, fucking tendon slip. <laughs> Tech Thank you, tech support. Strim not gay enough since June ended. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, redneck, dude. The fuck, I mean, yeah, shot the dude 60 times. There's a return to the old days of fucking uh, cop shooting black dudes. Marcus, 
It's um, it's a hangboard. You here? I post an example photo for people who like don't understand. There you go. It's what it looks like. You're like, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> um, that caboose, it's surprisingly not that bad. <laughs> Thank you for the gift sub and the congratulations, Marcus. Uh, just some climbing, Bobby. Just some climbing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unicorn. A white dude just shot up 30 people and a black dude got shot 60 times for shooting nobody. Shit's all fucked up. Yep. There we go. God damn it. Gay biddies for a capitalism. Uh, climbers want to be goats so bad. We all do, actually. We all do. Viscous. Can't recommend it enough. I love it. Yeah, I, I have to start. In fact, you know what? Should have been doing this the whole time. Is my tension set at? Okay. Uh, Red Deck. Remember in... You may not remember, remember, but... You know the scene in the Avengers movie where fucking they tell uh, Mr. Hulk to Hulk out? And, and, and Mark Ruffalo, Hulk Ruffalo fucking looks at him and says, That's the, you need time to get angry. He's like, that's the secret. I'm always angry. My hands always hurt. It just is what it is. When is there not fucked up shit happening in this country? I'm entirely desensitized at this point. Yeah, 100%. Sorry, Karina. Good luck. Yep, makes no difference. Do dangerous fun shit or not. Still in pain. Hey, let's see. Here. Elron, my favorite thing that a uh, fucking old burned out hippie told me one time. He was stocking shelves and I walked in. I was just miserable in pain. And he looks at me and he's like, how you how you doing? I've been, I'd known him for a while. And he's like, how you doing? I said, I'm fucking miserable. He goes, good. It means you're paying attention. It's one of those comforting things. He used to have one of these devices for fencing for grip strength years and years ago. Uh, those things worth it. I've heard they give you mad carpal tunnel. Caboose, if you did only this, yeah, you'd be fucked. There's no way around the fact that these bodies aren't meant to last, this cat. Yep. Hype train done. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for the hype train. It's been a while since we had one, but thank you. Um, everything's collapsing in this nation until a foreigner has something to say. Okay, when a foreigner speaks, everything is honky dory, and then they shut them. What? I right, whatever. Um, do you like Biden's fancy way of saying "Don't let people get shot"? When you're oh yeah, yeah, that was fucking dude. That was something, wasn't it? Magic. Jesus Christ. Uh, 
Oy vey. All right. Let's see, which one do I need to do? I need to actually, I need to balance this. I should probably, um, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, Carpe. Yeah, those are useful too. Um, this, I'm trying to build the tendons. That's, that's, I'm trying to engage the tendons and get some build go there. Um, because yeah, with, with a, like a fingerboard, it's all about fucking that. Uh, Kai the Mountain Goat is such a great idea. Um, <laughs> oh, fucking A. Apparently I'm going to get drawn as a mountain goat now. Duly noted. All right. Yeah, I can feel my left hand's weaker. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, you're never gonna. Act, well, you might actually do it. You know what? I'm never gonna. I'm not gonna say never with you. You're crazy enough. Um, <laughs> Magic Sky Wizard, 100 percent though. Um, I'm gonna raid over to Squiddy. Um, I'm gonna hop in voice chat for a little bit afterwards. Um, we'll keep going. A little bit there. Why dig? Love your face. <laughs> viscous, viscous, viscous. Oh, viscous. You are very right. Good night as well. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Dude, your your pinky is just not strong. Your middle finger really is the strongest. It really is. That's why Magnus must use it for his demos. I'm more equal on my left hand. My right hand is, um, all right, Bobby, cool. My left hand is more equal across the fingers than my right hand. My right hand is middle finger dominant. My left hand is equal on the first three fingers. Pinky is lacking. Not for me. Cassidy, not for me. Not by a long shot, actually. Either way, everyone bye. <laughs>